Hello everybody and welcome, my name is David Lees and in today's video I have a review of Transformers Galaxies issue 4. Um, if you've been watching my previous videos on the Transformers Galaxies comic book series you'll know I haven't been too impressed uh, with the general content, pace and uh, structure of the story and I'm afraid to say the same applies to issue 4. Um, I am pleased to say it's the end of the uh, Constructicons saga, uh, the fourth and final issue and we'll move on to somebody new in the next issue. Um, but this is issue four, uh, in which, building on what we've seen last time, uh, the Constructicons decide to go with the flow when they merge and form the, the devastated personality, uh, and to go with it, um, and that's, it's like a Jekyll and Hyde uh, personality, you just take over for them. Um, the issue starts with a Turgamax quote, which is the ideal way of really turning me off, which I've never really enjoyed what Turgamax has said, she's never really been helpful in, in anything. Um, it seems to be mostly misquoted and primarily unhelpful. Uh, but the Constructicons start their plan to go and destroy one of the cities on this random planet of Mayalks. Um, just out of interest, um, when did Longhall become twice as large as the other Constructicons? He's standing there, towering over them. Um, I don't know if that's for dramatic effect or the way it's been pictured, but it just looks odd to me. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the Insecticons are sitting in the background, and they've been in the background of the story throughout. Um, in fact, you could pretty much say that it's, it's just been a manipulation um, of the Constructicons into the Insecticons' path, and vice versa. Um, but basically, uh, the, ins the Insecticons are pointing the Constructicons at this city on Mayalks, um, the Insecticons get in, break through the security, such as it is, um, start absorbing live sparks. Um, it's rather brutal, rather torturous, um, pretty rough. The Insecticons are quite a bloodthirsty, if that's the word, quite a bloodthirsty group. Uh, Bombshell fires one of his Cerebro shells at this poor victim, tells him to uh, turn off his vocal processes and then they dive in. Um, and what they're doing then is reprocessing that living spark and energon um, into a cache of energon for the Constructicons to use. So, um, just a recap for those who haven't been concentrating here. Remember, uh, we must let go and allow the seventh consciousness to take over. What if it traps us in the void? It won't. Ultimately, it's still us. It responds to our commands. We just have to do it like the last time, working with it, not against it. So, this devastated personality that forms when they combine um, is quote, evil, um, and they are being subverted from their uh, initial programming of rebuilding Cybertron and its outlying properties um, and so on, colonies and whatever, uh, and they decided to go with it, they've all been seduced to the dark side, uh, yeah, um, and they have this philosophical discussion that really doesn't amount to a great deal. Losing control is scary, but I'm comfortable with letting him go. I've got a lot of rage to help fuel the big guy, um, and the constructor con just uh, wade in. Uh, apart from the interruption, will this suffice? So they have this um, raw and unstable energon. Um, and Bone Crusher says, yeah, unstable energon, excuse me, unstable energon is the perfect fuel for committing unstable acts. Uh, and so they, they tank up on this unstable energon. Um, it looks like Shrapnel asks them to leave a few survivors. Uh, Bombshell gets excited about the prospect of trashing the entire city and its population. Um, and then the Constructicons unite. Um, and we finally see the Constructicons in full force. Um, I have I have to say, I'm not entirely convinced about this sort of um, concluding sequence because Devastator seems significantly larger than he should be. Um, I have been in darkness for too long, now I emerge into the light. And he's... if. These Autobots here are, say, about 12 foot tall, just as an example. Then Devastator must easily be 60 feet tall, um, which doesn't quite add up mathematically in terms of conservation of mass. Um, it's just too big. Um, these must be micromasters, or the scales are wrong. I mean, look here. This is a prime example. Uh, this is Devastator over the shoulder shot, looking down at ants, basically. Um, and again, it's not just perspective, it's reiterated here. He goes kicking them with his, uh, with his feet. There's the Mixmaster leg, um, and these things are, are tiny, but this is Mixmaster, who is a, a normal scale Decepticon, say about um, sort of 12 feet tall, um, 
so that's 12 feet roughly um, and these things are crushed me like bugs so I'm not I'm not convinced he's become much too large um, but he goes on a, on a rage and bashes and trashes everything um, all forces eliminated which is unfortunate because the Insecticons wanted some survivors but there you go and you see here uh, devastation complete devastator reigns supreme um, and they've given him um, the ability to talk in complete sentences which is, is nice for a combiner uh, but you can see uh, this iron hide replica for example just kind of dangling off his chest plate he must be much much bigger um, and so it just doesn't add up for me um, yes Devastator's big but he's not that big uh, and the Insecticons complain and nonetheless they all disassemble um, enjoyed that fantastic hooray and their, their conversion to the dark side is complete the Insecticons use the Energon that they've consumed and reprocessed um, to buy themselves a ticket back to Cybertron nice feature of Onslaught and Vortex here two other combiners uh, nice picture of Onslaught we don't see, never saw enough of him in the original G1 in my opinion uh, random Decepticon possibly Onslaught with a red tinge what's going to happen to those chumps on Mayox? that's up to them for now or return to them return them to the fold when their services are next needed hmm, Megatron permitting so Shockwave does have long term plans meanwhile it's a typical sunset scenario uh, the constructor comes to decide what to do. Apparently, they may have been left a ship, um, but uh, they don't have to go and respond to Shockwave's call. They don't have to build anything. Uh, they don't have to stay. They don't have to go. They are completely free. Uh, of course, they're absolutely actually not. We've just seen that Shockwave's going to recruit them, and we know long term they will become uh, part of the Decepticon crew. It's a bit of a weak ending for me. It's like, yeah, we're, we're free, but not really. Shockwave puts them on hold. This miniseries has had the prequel problem. We all, we all know where it's going to end up. Um, and it's it's just like, how do we get there? And the steps have been plodding. Uh, the artwork has been nice, I have to say, but let's just summarise. Uh, the Constructor Cons are forged to rebuild after the war with a threefold spark. They rebuild, they get good at it. They are manipulated into finding the Enigma and try some combining, which they succeed partially, You know, meet with mixed success. Uh, they realise they need the Energon to combine and therefore they are rationed um, and kicked off world to go and rebuild some of the outlying colonies uh, with limited Energon so there's no risk of them learning how to combine. Shockwave sends them the Insecticons to meet them, train them, give them what en Energon as they need it. Um, they learn to function as a team of six and then with Devastator. Then we saw today uh, the Insecticons help them uh, break into a city, demolish the entire city um, kill all the, all the inhabitants uh, but it's enough for the Insecticons to buy their ticket home and the Constructicons get stranded on the random planet that has taken four issues to unravel um, and it's just taken me about 30 seconds to explain it, the story has completely lacked pace I feel a little bit short changed having paid for four issues and got two issues worth of story um, I'm really hoping that the next issue is significantly better, otherwise I'm going to stick with just the, the normal Transformers series. It's not worked for me. I know some people have said it's great and they've enjoyed it, but I have to admit I really haven't. Next issue is Cliff Jumper. Now, I really have got high hopes for this one. I know I've just said that the Constructicon series was dreadful, um, but I think Cliff Jumper was massively underused in the cartoon, in the comic. It was all Bumblebee, I think that's what they're alluding to here. Um, Bumblebee got all the limelight. Cliff Jumper was by far the more interesting character. Bumblebee, as in the new comic book series, is just a walking liability. Uh, weakest, uh, least likely to be the most dangerous, least likely to be the most useful. In fact, just least likely. So, really hopeful for this one next month. Uh, the alternative artwork uh, cover gallery. Uh, this is the one we've had on the front of my issue. Uh, this is uh, Devastator looking down at the city skyline. Um, this next final one here uh, looks a little odd to me. Um, the way sh um, Devastator's posed is kind of like he's sort of bending his knee and sticking his hips out. It looks a bit feminine. Uh, that's just my, my view. Um, but yeah, we can see exactly what they're getting at. Shockwave has basically got Devastator in the palm of his hand. Mentioned um, Transformers Galaxies issue 5 coming in allegedly in January but we're now in, towards the end of February but it's coming soon 
Um, I've always found the timings on the comic books a little out in their advertise. So we'll see what that, how that looks like. Uh, the Umbrella Academy, mm, probably not. The Kill Lock, mm, possibly also not as well. And then the standard blurb on the back for the Transformers uh, series, the Transformers universe as they've widened it. Um, yeah, mostly fo focused on the Transformers um, normal issues. The latest of which I do have and will be reviewing in the very near future. I haven't much enjoyed Transformers Galaxy so far. Please do let me know in the comments what you think. Um, and I will be back shortly with the next Transformers issue review and more Transformers Galaxies when they're out next month. Thank you very much for watching. I'm David Lees and I've really enjoyed this. Uh, transform and roll out.